the next uh, is the invited uh, presentation. Uh, it is presented by Dr. Pfeiffer, and the title of, of the presentation is Understanding Photovoltaic Energy Conversion in Solar Cells with Radial Junction Based on Silicon Nanowires. So, Dr. Pfeiffer, please. Better now, yes? Yes, good. Uh, one reason is, uh, actually, uh, uh, my father died last month, so he's still on my mind a lot. Uh, the other reason is, uh, we had a number of discussions during uh, past years with my father, because my father was working for a company uh, here, which is which was a traditional company devoted to energy systems. So his specialty was making steam turbines. The company started already in 19th century making steam engines, and then started to make steam uh, turbines, and they made about 4,000 of them, and the total installed capacity of the turbines was something like 18 gigawatts. 18 gigawatts is actually the, uh, nearly the same thing as the installed electrical capacity of the Czech Republic. So when we discussed with my father, he was always telling me, well, photovoltaics, when you show me first megawatts, I will start to take that seriously. Uh, actually, this happened recently, and namely in the year 2010, Czech Republic had this composition of the installed electrical power. We had about 20 gigawatts installed, and out of that, most of that was due to the turbines, coal, gas, and nuclear power plants, but about close to two gigawatts was due to photovoltaic power plants. And the current status is that the country has about two gigawatts installed, which is about 10% of the installed capacity. And last year, about 3% of the electricity produced in the country was coming from the solar power uh, panels. Uh, so uh, that's good to illustrate the point that within a lifetime of a single person, uh, things can change considerably. The steam turbines became a dominant technology of the past uh, generations, and it may be that the photovoltaic power is poised to become the dominant power of the future generations. Uh, but in this talk, I'm not going to talk about gigawatts. I actually want to talk about something like picowatts. Uh, because the picowatts are the expected power generated by radial junctions, individual radial junctions in the silicon nanowire based solar cells. Uh, I should say that the work was done in cooperation with a number of people, especially with people at the Ecole Polytechnique uh, at Palaiso, but other people as well. Uh, it's not necessary to explain the advantages of silicon nanowires here. I want to point out that we will be talking about silicon nanowires without any quantum size effect. But even without that, uh, it brings advantages. Namely, there is a short distance collect uh, collection uh, distance for electron hole pairs, uh, nor typically something like 150 nanometers. And also, the structure has very much improved light trapping. The principle of the radial junction is like this, that's well known. And these are the preparation steps of how you grow the radial junctions. So in the video, uh, which will start again, we have a substrate with a bottom TCO. And we first deposit the catalytic particles, uh, thin in this case. Then you start the VLS growth. You get the silicon nanowire. You coat it with amorphous silicon absorber layer. Then you do the doped layer on the top, and you cover it with the top TCO. Uh, the growth steps are listed here again, and these are well known. In this case, they were developed by the group at Ecole Polytechnique, namely Benedict O'Donnell in, during his PhD thesis. Then you don't do it for a single wire. You do it for an array. So you have an array of radial junctions. And ideally, your cell would have a structure like this. Uh, the 
in fact, it is different. Uh, if you look, then you get a disorder in the structure. These are the steps which are now used by Sumyadip Misra at Ecole Polytechnique, who is growing the structure using thin uh, catalytic particles. And uh, then he grows the nanowires with a diameter of about 40 nanometers. Uh, the length might be a few microns. And they, when they are coated by about 100 nanometer thick uh, absorber layer, uh, they look like this, and then with a top TCO coating, they will finally look something like this. The dimensions are variable, and depending on them, you will get different efficiencies of the solar cells. The actual samples look somewhat like this. So this would be a sample typically with size 25 by 25 millimeters. And you have an array of different cells on that with either 2 dia uh, millimeters diameter or 4 millimeters diameter. And these cells run to efficiencies of about 8%, uh, which was published last year, and getting to higher values, uh, which are now close to the double digit, digit values already. Uh, if you have a structure like that, you can also check your homogeneity, because you have a number of cells there. And uh, this is an example measured on one cell. Uh, the VOC distribution on the various cells there, uh, which shows fairly high values and mostly homogeneous. Not always. In another cell, you will see that the uh, VOC is changing over the structure. And that gives you more logic if you plot it in 3D. And then you will see that actually there are gradients on the surfaces. So the VOC is increasing coming from this side of the sample to the other side. And uh, with the other sample, the gradient is even higher. And if you can go in this direction, you can get higher VOCs, in this case over 800 millivolts. Uh, we have also measured, for example, electroluminescence spectra. Uh, these are the electroluminescence and photoluminescence spectra combined. And it's interesting to know that we have a band gap for amorphous silicon here, which is visible for photoluminescence case. But in ele electroluminescence, we also see the uh, light emission from the defect states. And that's interesting. Uh, but uh, that's, say, the work in progress. And we don't know how to interpret it. These are the uh, characterization which is done on macroscopic level. But actually, more interesting are the microscopic variations. Because this is the principle of the solar cell. But actual solar cell looks something like this. So you see plenty of disorder. Uh, the wires don't want to grow straight. And it is quite interesting to think about what could be the best structure for the photovoltaic energy conversion. This brings me to the concept of the distribution of the efficiencies. So uh, here I use a concept of uh, Karpov, uh, cited about 10 years ago. Uh, he was noting that the distributions of the solar cells are not usually uh, si simply available. Uh, here are two cases of histograms of short circuit current. And for this is the case for small cells or larger cells. And if you do the larger cells, you will get the averaging and uh, narrower distribution and, of course, lower values. Uh, so it's interesting to go in opposite direction than what the industry does. Industry tries to go to large areas. But in our research, we actually want to go to opposite and to go to small areas, to the areas of uh, micrometers square or even less than that. And our fundamental question is, what efficiency distribution can we expect for the mesoscopic units in novel types of solar cells? Uh, this is a uh, nicely uh, discussed in uh, using the random diode arrays concept introduced by Karpov. And by the way, it's very similar to the equivalent circuit, which was shown by Tonio Buonasisi yesterday. Uh, uh, Karpov noticed that if you have a functioning solar cell, it's actually a parallel, parallel connected array of diodes. And most of them must be good. Uh, but if some of them are just a little bit weaker, you will have a phenomena which is illustrated here. And that is, if you mostly operate your cells in the maximum power point, uh, most of them will follow the IV like this. 
but if you have a weaker diode, it will have a very similar IV, uh, but if the VOC is lower than for the other, for the rest, then at maximum power point, this cell might be already polarized in forward. So that means the cell actually acts as a shunt for the parallel, uh, for the neighboring cells, and it acts as a shunt only for some neighborhood, fortunately, because of the uh, resistance of the connection in between them. Now, this concept was proposed for the macroscopic variations so in solar cells, so, but it is also ideally suited for discussing the nanostructure solar cells, and that's where we were interested, because for a number of years we do the microscopy uh, of photovoltaic conversion structures using the conductive AFM, and this is a schematic picture of our measurement when we use a conductive AFM tip to contact the individual structures, uh, and we measure in a circuit which is connected through the bottom of the cell, and we measure the local conductivities. Uh, in case of nanowire-based radial junction cells, we have an additional advantage that there is a very well-defined uh, microscopical unit which is not connected to the others except in the bottom. Uh, this picture is just schematic, so it's good to illustrate the actual dimensions which we have. So if we have an IFM tip landing on the sample, uh, we need to zoom in quite a lot to see what is actually going on. So this is a zoom of about 1,000 times to get the scanning on the surface. But you still don't see much because the surface doesn't show you too many details. So we need to do further zoom uh, to the tip itself. We still don't see much, so I need to plot it differently. This is the tip as it looks in actual dimensions, and these would be the arrays of the radial junctions. And this is uh, the correct geometry of our measurement in our case. And that brings us to a number of challenges uh, in this field. Unfortunately, we cannot show you the final results of what would be the efficiencies for individual radi radial junctions, because we are uh, having to deal with a lot of problems or challenges. And actually, this is a growing list. As we work, we are adding more items to the list. Uh, we, are, we are also adding some solutions, but we are not exhausting the list until, uh, at least not yet. So. We need to deal with the mechanical properties of radial junctions. We need to define the illumination to observe photoresponse. We need to measure the local photo IV characteristics with the expected level of currents on the level of picoamps and the corresponding powers of also picowatts. We need to quantify the photoresponse, and we also found out that we need to correlate various microscopies to understand what is going on.